Well, if you're like me, you are very excited for FSR 2.0, both for AMD users as well as Nvidia users who have a GPU that doesn't support DLSS because hopefully, hopefully FSR 2.0 is going to deliver something at least mostly as good as DLSS, but you know, like I said, runs on more GPUs, this would be absolutely huge, but their initial unveiling of this footage was only in 4K. But we know most people don't actually play at 4K, so what about 1440p? What about 1080p? They've now released some side-by-side -side screenshots from Deathloop, and they are available in high quality, which is why I'm not really bothering to, uh, you know, also this is, a, this is a news video, so I'm talking about other topics too, this isn't just focused on this, but I'm not gonna like do too much like side-by-side -side here. I'd encourage you to go to my source in the description and actually download the high quality images so that you're not looking at them through YouTube compression. Although I will say that to my eye, this looks extremely impressive with the massive, massive caveat of with temporal based super resolution technologies like DLSS, like TSR and like FSR 2.0, motion is where it tends to break down and these are stills. And even the motion video that they showed at 4K was very slow moving, slow panning and it's giving it an ideal situation to work with. So let's also temper our expectations, but I will say that in the screenshots, this looks quite good and I am very excited. Anyway, like I said, I'll have sources for those screenshots in the description to the video that you could then take a closer look at yourself. In other AMD news, hey, we know the RX 6X50 GPUs are coming out soon. Although this isn't really officially from AMD, ah, um, We've seen so many rumors about this, this has to be happening and it's probably happening soon. And it looks like we're seeing a benchmark for one of them leak out. This is the 6700 uh, 6, upgrade, the 6750 XT. Our knowledge of these is that they're just going to be a little bit faster, should be a bit faster on the memory, should maybe have a bit higher power limit, which would allow maybe a bit higher clocks, that kind of stuff. To me, it sounds like these are honestly just kind of like an overclocked version of the originals, but whatever, it should make them a bit faster. Now this particular benchmark that's leaked out is not at all ideal, so I don't think this tells us like a huge amount here. Um, because this is, first of all, gra GFX Bench, Graphics Bench, which I don't know much about. I don't think that's a very popular one to use, although video cards at least tracked down a, a 6700 that ran the same type of test. And the 50 XT version seems to be 2% higher or something like that. So I'm not going to read too much into this, but if you want to download it and run it for yourself or something like that, great. Now it's looking like, according to video cards, we're expecting to see these launching on May 10th. Although, as far as I know, that's still rumored rather than officially confirmed by AMD. Now in other GPU news, Where's the Intel GPUs? Well, apparently we're at least seeing a listing for an ARC Pro version. Now the Pro version we don't know a lot about. This would be more designed for workstations, but at least in, in this release from Dell, it appears like they're gonna use the same naming system like A370M, but just put a Pro at the end. And this is now being listed on a uh, you know Precision 7770 <laughs> and 7670. Um, workstation laptops, it looks like here. Anyway, seems to be the Pro variant. We don't know a lot about it. And again, when can you actually buy a laptop that's not in South Korea, as I've reported earlier on that one particular model? Intel, get these GPUs out there, please. Are you just delaying for drivers? Um, well, also we have some other rumors about Intel uh, Arc GPUs, which is that maybe when they come to desktops, there'll be an even further cut down model below the A350. We knew that there's the A3 series, which is their low end, which had a 50 and a 70, and that's the laptop models uh, that, that should be incoming, but desktop models should follow the same naming scheme. But it's looking like there may be a 10 series. This is from Enthusiastic Citizen, who um, according to video cards, and I've noticed this myself, has has leaked things accurately in the past. So could be true. And apparently they're saying that this 310 model 
would be targeting the performance of like the RX 6400, which AMD kind of surprise launched a couple days ago, and I did a video on that. Um, anyway, that's not super high levels of performance, so that's interesting. So if this is true, we would be expecting, you know, we, we already thought that, you know, the 380 would be down to 8 XE cores, which is 128 execution units. So if this got cut down to like four or six cores, that would be 64 to 96 execution units. I mean, question mark, interesting, I don't know. We'll see uh, if this rumor proves to be true. Now in NVIDIA GPU uh, rumor mill, um, we're seeing more confirmation that the 4090 could be drawing at least 600 watts and possibly more. That could be like the Founders Edition power draw and then the, uh, the non-reference models, you know, from AIB partners could even go beyond that. Now the source for this seems to be uh, Moore's Law is Dead and he often has some accurate leaks, although um, to my knowledge, he's not always 100% perfect. Now, whether that's just because plans change behind the scenes after he has his info, you know, whatever. But it's looking like, according to Tom at Moore's Law is Dead, and I'm reading it reported from WCCF Tech, uh, they are looking at 600 watts reference there. Now, this would be similar how like the 3090 Ti reference is 450 watts, but we have some uh, models that go over 500 watts. So that makes sense. Now, if you're panicking about the future of GPUs and their power draw, I would say maybe don't panic if you're buying something in the mid range or even upper mid range, even high end, but not 90 class, because it's these uh, Halo products where they might push the power draw to insane numbers for very minimal performance gains just to get the maximum possible performance out of that hardware regardless of power draw. I don't think we should expect to see that on the mid-range and lower devices, uh, even high-end that's not the Halo product. Just like how, you know, an RTX 3060 draws way less than 200 watts of power, despite the fact that your 3090 Ti can, can have models over 500 watts, right? So I, I'm just saying like, I think some people are assuming like all new GPUs in the next generation are gonna be insane on power draw. I just really don't think that's gonna be the case. I think it's the Halo products. Anyway, um, also a little bit of news here, kind of interesting if you read more of the details, but I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, NVIDIA did a talk about how they're using AI and machine learning, not just for things like DLSS, but for actually designing their future GPUs, how it can uh, uh, dramatically speed up parts of the design process, uh, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, you could take a look at that source if you're interested in reading in further. Let's talk a bit about CPUs. So we saw the 5800X 3D launch on the 20th and it did sell out. I posted it um, on my community page and it was up for several hours, but it did sell out. Although I did see some stock come back in stock on Amazon yesterday. So I, I don't know, maybe it's getting, getting restocked frequently, we'll see, but it did look like demand was pretty high here, despite the fact that it doesn't feature overclocking, but wait, it kind of does if you're willing to go to B-clock overclocking, and MSI looks to be enabling that on their, um, on particular motherboards uh, with, with a new BIOS update, it looks like here. It looks like the Meg X570 Godlike Ace and Unify series, um, which I think it, that's because they have external clock generators. I believe that's why they could do the B clock over, uh, overclocking and can see some good performance gains here. Although again, without official overclocking, uh, support here, I think we'd want to be be careful on, on, on what you do with this, guys. <laughs> anyway, I'm not an overclocking expert, so I'm not going to weigh in too heavily on all of that. Although undervolting, we're seeing reported from WCCF Tech that one of their users came, came out with some screenshots showing uh, being able to undervolt it significantly down to 1 volt, 57 watt peak power at sub 1 volts and being able to maintain roughly the same performance, but drastically decrease uh, their like temperatures in Cinebench to 43 Celsius, all the way down from uh, 80 Celsius um, when they were running at, I think, these stock values. Now, whether you can get that out of your chip, who knows? 
but I don't think that undervolting would require the create you know the the specific motherboard support like this kind of overclocking stuff might. So hey, there's that. Also in CPU news, if you're worried about your Alder Lake CPU bending, which has apparently been an issue, there is a uh, a company. A uh, Taiwanese company here, Thermalrite, who are offering a bending corrector frame. Now, I'd be interested in seeing reviews on these and, and if and when they actually uh, are out and work. Uh, but that should be interesting, and the price doesn't look to be too high, so might be something to look into if you are worried about that bending happening to yours. Also, uh, just in some quick Intel news, uh, there was an article posted, uh, you know, I'll just pull up the actual thing where Intel's announcing a graphics research organization. This is not necessarily just for gaming, but for just delivering best immersive visuals in any kind of application that, that, that might be needed in. And there's an interesting blog post you could read here from Anton Kapl Kaplanian. I, I butchered that, sorry. Anyway, who's the vice president of Accelerated Computing Systems and Graphics Group. Uh, Chief T Technology Officer and Director of Graphics Research Organization, which is, again, the new thing that they're announcing here. Along with this, they did release um, an update of the Sponza base scene, which um, I think was was used a long time ago when he worked at Crytek. There was like an old version of this. But anyway, with, with a lot of modern day stuff, you can actually download uh, this uh, and, and look at it uh, with these high-end high assets. Um, and I think the formats supported here are Autodesk, uh, 3DS Max, 2022 Source, USD, GLTF, and FBX. And I don't even know what all of those things mean because I do not work in this kind of field. But hey, there you go. All right, hopefully this was useful and interesting information for all of you today. And I hope that you have an excellent day.